So the last video uh, we set up a very simple blueprint and now we're going to show you how to do some more complicated blueprints. Um, as you recall I used I added my uh, blueprint editor over here as another tab uh, so that I could just sort of switch between them easily and sort of see what's going on. What we'd like to do is be able to take this sphere and move it uh, up and down uh, using some kind of motion through the blueprints. And if your blueprint editor isn't open, you can just click on Edit Blueprint here. And if there's no blueprint, this will be like Add a Blueprint. So I'm going to go back over, go back over to my blueprint and just sort of think out loud about what we want to do. Ideally, we'd like to have sort of a starting position and an ending position that we're going to move between. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is um, create a few variables that will help me with that. So over here, there's a lot of stuff about the current blueprint. And if you notice, again, my tabs have the viewport. This is how my object is drawn. Construction scripts, this, these are things that are going to uh, be executed when the script is first built. And then the event graph. So what happens when the graph, when, when the uh, game starts or when this um, object gets loaded into the scene. Uh, for example, that's where begin play will occur uh, when it's first loaded. And then every tick, this event tick will happen. Okay, so let's add some variables really quick. Um, what you'll notice is that there are a couple of things. First of all, these are color co uh, coded to let you know what kind it is. So this red tells you it's a Boolean variable. And I have this selected, but you can notice over here, I have all the details of it. So if you accidentally start typing things or switch the variable here, the name's gonna get set, but you can change the name over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a um, vector. Now vector, is going to be an X, Y, and Z position. And I'm going to call this initial position. The other thing that I want to do is like, you know, I want to be able to debug in my game. And if you look over here, there's a little like curvy looking thing. It's supposed to look like a closed eye. <laughs> and if you click on it, you'll see that the eye opens. And then if I come over here to lab one, what will happen is that variable will show up here. Uh, first, I have to save my blueprint, uh, compile it, so it turns all that into code. And then um, what I'll see is that this uh, initial position will now be under my default name variables here. So I have an X, Y, and Z position. I also want to have like a target position. I want to be able to set it in the editor. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create a target position. And I'm going to make this visible again. Uh, you'll, whatever variable you created last, it's going to automatically make it that type. So you might need to switch it, you know, depending on, on what's going on. Um, I'm going to then also create a speed because I want it to move at a certain speed that I can customize, maybe faster or slower. I'm going to make this visible, but I'm going to make this speed a float because this is going to represent uh, a scalar value, so a unit value that's going to be multiplied by, you know, sort of whatever direction I'm moving in. So that will be my speed. I'm going to go ahead and quickly compile. So let's set up my initial position. The way I'm going to do that is by setting it up in begin play. So wherever I put my object in the scene is where I want to start my initial position from. And so I will um, set that here. And the way I'm going to do this is I can take one of these these uh, variables here. So I can grab initial position and drag it over here and then I can either get it or I can set it. So I'm going to set it and I need to drag the execute wire to here. All right, so this is going to set the init initial position and I want my initial position to be the actor's location. So I'm using the word position here but it's really uh, location for the transform. And if you go over here what you'll see is that it's called location, which is why it's called that. So maybe we should call these two, call these initial location instead. And initial and target location. Okay, so I'm going to re go ahead and add this. So initial location. The way I deleted that, by the way, is I clicked on it and then I just hit my delete key. All right, so from here, what I want to say is get actor location. And this is going to look for the root um, component in your actor and try to get its location. 
And since I my root component is really the static mesh component, I know that it's going to get its actual like location in the in the system. So I'm going to grab this return value from get actor location. I have to do my execute wire here so it'll set it. This will set my initial location to be whatever my target location was. I mean, I'm sorry, whatever my initial location was of my actor. All right. So what I should see is no matter, you know, if I compile this now and I come over here and I run and I set my position to be something other than this, like let's say something like this, I can see that this has changed. And if I hit run and then select that object, which is the spear blueprint, then I will see that my initial position is now set to that value. So I kind of know things are working, at least initially. The next thing I want to do is I want to be able to set my position, like update my position every tick. So I'm going to just kind of move this over here because this is going to get a little bit big. What I really want is, uh, you know, if you've used Unity, there is a function called move to move towards, I believe, or move to. And basically what this does is it takes a starting location, an ending location, and a delta distance, like a maximum distance I can move. And then it returns, you know, like uh, how far or like what my next location should be based on on my current position. In order to do that, I'm going to just create a function to do that, because otherwise it's going to get really messy here. And just like when you write code, you shouldn't just, you know, write one giant function where you put everything in. Instead, you should cre actually create functions. So let's be good software programmers here and make your code a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to click on the function button here. And then I can name it. So I'm going to call it move towards. This is actually a pretty useful function for moving things around. So it might be something that you want to save for, you know, later later usage. Over here on the right, I can customize sort of everything about it. So I can say like how many inputs it's going to have, what the output is going to be. I can have multiple outputs if I need to. And, um, you know, information about the description. So this is like, you know, uh, would be like a tool tip over the node when I use that node in my code. Okay. So um, what my inputs are going to be they're going to be two. I'm first I'm going to take vectors. So I'm going to have like the current position. Okay. Then I'm going to have a destination. Then I'm going to have a max delta distance. This is going to be a floating point value. Okay, so now that I have the initial input set up, I want to set up what my output is going to be. And it's going to be a, a vector also. And we will just call this like next location. I keep going back and forth between position and location. Also, you notice that I'm not consistent with my spacing, whether or not I use spaces. It doesn't really matter. In um, Unreal, what it'll do is every time there's a capital, it'll put a space for you automatically. And if, otherwise, it's just going to use the exact name you used here. So it, does, it, it really doesn't matter. That's my return note. I'm, I'm actually going to delete this for a second because it's kind of in my way. <laughs> and then I'll just pop these up when I need them. So in order to figure out like where I'm going to move and how to move there, it's helpful to understand a little bit about 3D, um, like linear algebra. And what if you remember in, um, you know, when you did just basic algebra, you often had a 2D position. So you might have like uh, an X coordinate or a Y coordinate. And then if you wanted to find out like the distance between them, you could use the distance formula. Well, what we want to do is find a, what's called a vector. So a vector is an orientation and a magnitude in three-dimensional space. And in order to do that, we're going to subtract one vector, one position from another. So when we take these two locations and we subtract them, it will give us a vector that points from the first location to the second location. So let's take this current location and we're going to type subtract here. I'll say vector minus vector, and we're going to subtract. Actually, we want the destination to be the, the ending point. 
So we're going to cross our wires here, even though they tell you never to cross the streams. Uh, we cross them, and this will give us a vector that's going to point in the direction of the destination. So the, the tail of the vector would be at the current location, and the head of the vector would be at the destination. This will probably become a little bit clearer when we do go into a little bit more about 3D math for games. So this is going to give us uh, this value, and what we want to do with it are a couple of things. So the first thing we want to do is normalize this value. And what we mean by normalizing is, if you remember I said that the vector that's going to come out of here is going to go from the head to the tail, well what I'd like to do is turn this into a unit vector. So it's going to have a length of 1, and that's what normalizing does, it gives it a length of 1. The reason I want to do that is because if I take a length 1 vector and multiply it by my distance, it's going to give me a vector that's going to be that length, right, because anything times 1 is that value. So I can scale that vector by this floating point value, and scaling means to, to make it longer, um, and it will give me a vector that's going to be that length. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. You'll notice that I do a lot of just typing to search because it's just a lot easier than trying to go through everything. So what I want to do is do a float. I need to do vector. So vector times a float here. I'm going to bring this over here so I can stretch my wire down here. Okay, so this is now going to give me, like this calculation will give me uh, a vector that's of the maximum length that I can move every frame in the direction of the destination. Okay. If I select both of these nodes and hit the letter C, I can make a comment. Okay, so I made a little comment box. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and grab my boxes here. Then I'll just sort of shrink it the right way. And then from this point on, I can just grab my box. But this is going to give me a note here, so I sort of remember what's going on at this point. Uh, so that's good. This will give me a maximum delta distance. Now, the, the next question is, if I'm moving, I don't want to go past my end point. Instead, what I'd like to do is end exactly at my destination if I'm going to pass it up. So how do I know if I'm going to pass it up or not? Well, this subtraction gives me a vector that will tell me if um, this vector, I can use it to compare if this vector is going to pass up that location, if that makes sense. So let's just try to do some code for it for a second here. OK, so we're going to take this subtraction here, and we're going to pull out another wire for it. And we're going to ask, what is the vector length of that vector? OK, so this will tell us, you know, how long, like how, what's the distance between the current location and the destination. That's what the length gives us. And we want to ask if the distance, so the vector length of this, is, um, you know, smaller or greater. So again, we will do vector length here. Right, so now that we have this, this will ask what this vector is, and so now we can do a comparison. So I'm going to just drag this out, and I can just type like a less than symbol, and this will say less than. So I can ask the question, is this length less than this length? And so the question is, what do I do if it is? Well, if the vector length you know, the current distance I have to travel is less than the maximum distance I should travel, then what I want to return is just my destination. And the way I'm going to do that is by creating a branch node. In a branch node, we'll take this in as a condition, and then let me do something when it's true or false. So when it's true, I want to return, so I'm going to use add return node here, and uh, by deleting it, apparently I deleted my output, so I'm going to go ahead and add my output back. And this is going to be 
next location. And what I'm going to take here is from my input the destination. So if I right click and then type destination here, I will be able to get the destination field uh, parameter. So that will return it if, uh, if that's true. I'm going to move this up here because I'm going to need to do a, a, another return node here for the opposite case, which is simply if this returns false, then I want to take this value and return that instead. So let's move this up a little bit just so it's a little prettier. And now I can take this result from you know what the distance is going to be and I'm going to take it there. I, I'm actually I just I made a mistake because this is just giving me the vector. I still haven't added it to my initial position so I want to do a plus and it's going to be a vector plus a vector. And then what this is going to be is my current location. And then I can take this wire and replace it. And so this adds my current location to that vector, which then gets me my next location. So all that just to create this function. And the function I'm just going to put here for a second so that if you need to pause your video, if you missed some of that while I was creating it, uh, I sometimes do these things a little bit fast, so I apologize. Then you have a second to pause it right now, and you can uh, set up your function in essence like this. Oh, <laughs> this function is actually not going to execute. I'm glad I did this because I actually have to take my execute wire and drag it all the way to branch. Now, um, you know, you can add what are called reroute nodes if you don't like these passing through other wires. Uh, if it's not, if you don't have a lot of it, it's not too bad, but if it gets messy, it is good to use the reroute nodes. So here's the function that we're going to use called move towards, and I'm going to save my blueprint, and I'm going to go back to my event graph now. So now that we're back at our event graph, uh, every tick, what we want to do is call this move towards function. So I'm just going to pull out a wire and I'm going to say move towards. And this is now my new node that I created, that's my function. And so you'll see that I have a current location and a destination. Well, my destination is always going to be my target location in theory. So uh, that's an easy one to fix. So we can just say, you know, get target location. And that will just pop up there. My current location is going to be whatever my actor's position is. So I want to say get actor location. And then I can pull this out here. And then my max de de uh, delta distance is going to be my speed. Now, the one issue with my speed is that I want it to be independent of how fast my frame rates are. So even though I can get my speed and just get it really quick, what I really want to do is multiply it by how much time has elapsed. It's going to be a float times a float. Let's drag this back a little bit. Let's switch the wires so that uh, so they don't cross. And then we're going to take this and take the max delta distance. All right, so this gives us an idea of, of what we want to do. Basically, every every tick, we're going to move this. It's going to calculate our next location. And we want to take this now and set our actor location to be that. So I'll just drag a wire here and say set actor location. And then drag my next location into it. All right, so now we're setting the actor location, which is great. But we still need to decide when we're going to switch our target location, right? So um, we're we've set it up so that we have initial location and a target location, but we're not really doing anything like determining when we're going to switch our target location to be back to a different location. So we're, we're running short on variables here. So let's add another variable. So this variable will be called end location.
and we will also make this a vector. All right. So um, our end location is going to be set in our editor. So let's make this uh, visible. And we're going to assume that we start off by going from our initial location to our target location. So let's set our target location. Okay, to be the end location. So we know we're initially going to go from the initial location to the end location. And then what we need to do here is look at our position and figure out if we need to uh, switch what our end location is going to be. So let's do that by adding another branch statement here. And what is our condition going to be? Well, our condition is going to be, is our current location the target location? So let's just grab the target location here. And we will get our current actor's location. And we'll ask the question, are these things equal? This is the vector version of equal. Now, one thing you'll notice is that there is this little green uh, input here. This is the tolerance, because when we're dealing with floating point numbers, um, you know, it's hard to get things to be exactly the same value. So this is basically they're going to be equal as long as their values are within 0001 tolerance. So I'm going to use that as my branching condition. And um, then with this, when we, if, if this is the truth, so if our target location has become our end location, then we need to branch again because we need to know, well, is our target location the initial location or the end location? So on true, we'll have a branch again. So we can say get a target location and get Initial location, <laughs> if I can type that in. Location. Then we'll do another equals here. Let's just drag this here. All right, so let's ask the question. If the target location is the initial location, then what do we need to do? Well, it means we arrived at our initial location, so the target location should now be the end location. So we will say set target location. That was not the right node. <laughs> set target location. And we're going to set it to be the get end location. Get, if I can type end location. So if it's true, we're going to do that. And if it's false, we will set target location Oops. to be the initial location. All right, so that should, in theory, swap the locations. So that the next time all of this executes, it will uh, go to the right location. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and then go to my lab here. And let's look at the settings that we've set up now on our blueprint. Here are my default fields. These come from my blueprint. You can actually change the, the names of these if you'd like. Um, but the initial location looks like it's 000, our target location. Our end location, we're going to, if you if you notice this right here, the X and Y uh, are the the is sort of the ground plane and the Z is the up plane. So this is different than Unity where the Z often faces the camera. Uh, here the Z is facing the up direction. So we're going to take the end location and we're going to say go 200 units up. And Unreal units are one centimeter and so this is you know basically rise two meters to get to the top and then in essence we want it to come back down. We also need a speed, and this is going to be, since we're multiplying it by the delta time, it's going to be uh, a speed in seconds. So I'm going to change this to be something like um, 
100 units per second. So that means it's going to take about two seconds to get to the top, and then it should return down to get two seconds to get to the bottom. And so let's take a look. There we go. Now, you might be wondering, what was going on there? Let's take a look again. Notice that it's kind of moving sort of funny. It's not moving straight up and down. So let's take a look at the code to see what's going on. Our initial location looks right. Target location is that. And what's happened is that since we changed our initial location to be position 40, we're actually going from that initial location to zero, which is why we're kind of going diagonally. So if you're expecting it to go up and down, it's because earlier we moved this sphere to a different location. And if we came back over here and clicked on the blueprint, and then looked at the uh, default fields. Well, these are going to be zero because they're not set until the uh, the uh, blueprint runs. If I put zero in here, this will change the sphere's location, and then we'll get you know sort of an exact up and down movement.